My name is Paul Zabel from the German Aerospace Center. I'm standing here in our Antarctic greenhouse from the Eden ISS project. And today I will give you a quick look around what I'm growing here and how the system works. I am now on that part of our facility that we call the Future Exploration Greenhouse. As you can see here, um, I'm surrounded by plants. Um, to my left side, we have uh, tomato plants. Um, behind that are cucumber plants. Um, to my right side, we have here four different types of lettuce. So we have uh, green lettuce, and we also have one that has uh, some red leaves. So they're also tasting a little bit different. Behind the lettuce here, we have uh, we have rocket. Uh, below that there are certain herbs like basil, uh, cu uh, coriander, um, chives and parsley and above here we have uh, Swiss chard which is really really tasty and behind that we have some red mustard plants with, uh, which have a yeah, spicy taste. I'm now inside our Antarctic greenhouse. I'm in the first room of the greenhouse, the so-called service section. Behind me here on the left side are all the different subsystems that supply our greenhouse. So there is the atmosphere management system that controls temperature, humidity and CO2 level inside the greenhouse. Then there is uh, the nutrient delivery system which mixes uh, different uh, kinds of nutrients with water and the water nutrient mixture is then supplied to the plants. There's also the thermal control system um, which uses different cooling fluids that come in from the outside with very low temperature to regulate the different temperatures of the uh, various subsystems inside the greenhouse. Here on the right side we have a working table and the control system which controls all the different functions in, inside the greenhouse. So we have over 100 uh, different kind of sensors for temperature, humidity, pressure and so on. All those sensors are connected to the sparks of, of the control system and are processed uh, by a computer and out of, the, out of the different sensor signals are then generated uh, different commands for all the various subsystems. Behind me, behind this door, basically is then the greenhouse. So in there we grow all the different plants. And this is a nutrient control system. So we have here in the bottom, we have uh, two big solu uh, nutrient solution tanks. Each of them can contain uh, around 200 liters of nutrient solution. We have two different solutions. One uh, with uh, lower concentration for all the lettuce, herbs uh, and other leafy greens and one with a uh, higher nutrient solution um, for the cucumbers, tomatoes, peppers and so on. Um, above here you can see um, uh, different dosing pumps which uh, combine the nutrients from the uh, high concentrated stock solution and pump small amount of that into the tanks to always have the same nutrient concentration inside the water. Here, on here this blue figures and numbers are um, sensor readings for the C value, the electroconductivity value that um, gives us yeah, uh, a number for the nutrient concentration in the tanks and also sensor values for the pH uh, of the water so that we know how acidic uh, the water is. I'm standing now in front of the atmosphere management system which conditions the air inside the greenhouse so it controls temperature, humidity and CO2 level inside the greenhouse. Here is a big air duct that sucks in all the air from the greenhouse. The air is then directed over um, UV lamps to kill any bacteria or something that is in the, in the air. Then the air goes through a heat exchanger where we uh, recover the humidity that the plants transpire. So we recover the humidity from the air and use the water again to feed the plants. After that the air is relatively cold 
so we also have some heating elements that um, heat the air up again to the desired temperature that we want to have. Here is then also a small tube that injects um, CO2 from CO2 bottles that are standing on the outside so that we always have um, the desired um, level of carbon dioxide in the greenhouse atmosphere. Here is then a big fan. Um, here are three different kinds of filters. So we have a pre-filter for any yeah, big particles that we want to filter out. Then we have a HEPA filter um, to filter out bacteria and contaminations. And we have a trace gas filter uh, with active charcoal that filters out uh, different uh, volatile organic components that are in the air. Below that is another fan. And then inside the uh, subfloor, so beneath the floor I'm standing on, um, are air ducts that are pumping then the air back into the greenhouse. So behind that door is our uh, control system. So if I open that up, you can see there are uh, various electronic components in here. Um, so at the top there are 20, 30, 50 wires and more coming in um, from all the sensors um, delivering data to the control system which is then uh, processing the data and by uh, defined algorithms is then controlling the greenhouse. So this box gives commands to all the different subsystems so to the atmosphere management system, to the nutrient delivery system to the thermal control system and also to some other components um, to turn them on and off uh, depending on certain parameters and set points. Um, as you can see it's uh, quite a complex system with lots of uh, wires and different modules and components um, but it's working very well. Here you can see our uh, tomato plants um, as you can see that we have a lot of red and almost ripe fruits on the plants. Uh, in about two days from now, right when the agrospace is held in Rome, I'm going to harvest uh, the first tomato tomatoes that we have grown here in our Antarctic greenhouse from the ENISS project.